tonight from Fogarty Arena, the new co-op meets the older co-op as the Spring Lake Park Coon Rapids Cardinals and Panthers meet the Elk River Zimmerman Elks High School Girls Hockey Class 2A Northwest Suburban Conference Clash tonight on CTN. Good evening, J.W. Cox with you here from Fogarty Arena as the Panthers and Cardinals are about to get introduced to this home crowd here at Fogarty off a great Thanksgiving weekend for this squad. They swept their two games in a tournament at St. Cloud, allowed just two total goals on the weekend. Defense for Coach Sandy Nelson's squad had been a bit of a struggle through the first few games, even though they rattled off four wins in their first five. They're going to have to play some defense tonight as the highest scoring team in Class 2A is waiting for them on the other side in the unbeaten 7-0-1 Elks of Elk River. How have these two teams been doing it? Well, for Elk River, they go pretty deep with four different lines, and that includes a second line anchored by Brianna Simon. Simon, the senior, has scored nine goals and has ten assists this season on a line that their coach, Dale Sager, told me comes with a lot of speed and is really the key to what they've been able to do early this year. On the other end, for the Spring Lake Park Coon Rapids Panthers, it's been Taylor Turnquist. She was a Spring Lake Park Panther last year. She also played defense throughout the balance of the early parts of her career. Now in her switch to forward, she has scored a goal in every single game thus far. 20 total points for the senior, just seven games in, 12 goals and eight assists. Should be a good one here tonight from Fogarty. And we will have the drop of the puck next here on CTN. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Back at the Ice House, you see the starters for the Elks and the Panthers of Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids here on CTN. The puck dropped and we're underway. McLean, Johnson, and Simon, Dexheimer, Mitchell, and Gould in net. Turnquist, Hackett, Crawford, Schultz, and Murphy, the top two defenders, and Sammy Miller, the sophomore, in net for the Panthers as we are underway in this one. Six and one for Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids, the new co-op off to an outstanding start. 7-0-1, the only blemish on the record for Elk River. It's a tie to Maple Grove, a top 10 team at Class 2A. They tied the Crimson 1-1, the only non-victory of the season. So we're underway. Taylor Turnquist leading that first line, skating after the puck past the blue line off to our right here at Fogarty. As the Elks have come into this game averaging up over six goals per game. They're the highest scoring team, the only team averaging close to six goals per game or over it in Class 2A. The Panthers, meanwhile, just over four goals per game, and they're allowing just over two and a half per game. So the defense is going to have to lock down, and the offense is going to have to continue for the Panthers as they get their first change in here on Elk River. Puck slides for the Elks past the blue line, up across center ice, touched up initially there by Allison Bozer. She's knocked down to the ice. And the Panthers have plenty of space to work it up through neutral ice. Pass sails wide. They were looking to connect with Brenna Del Castillo. Came just one goal short of a hat trick a couple of days ago, but did have a pair of goals and an assist in that game. And Del Castillo is a big part of the second line for the Panthers. Puck. Reversed all the way around the boards behind the net. Panthers able to touch it up in front. Quick shot on the backhand in front of the senior Gould. Just slides wide of the crease and it's back out for Elk River along the near side. Panthers making it tough up along the boards. Good work in there for Mallory Corrigan, the junior forward. Puck caught up. Poked back. Corrigan able to send it back towards the blue line, but it's intercepted there. Taken back up ice by Annie Dalton. Dalton, the junior, 
Pops a wobbling puck that drops down right in front of Miller, and she's able to steer it to the left. Pass up ice intercepted by an elk flying in off the bench and now taken back one on one. Shot and a save for Sammy Miller. She deflects it in behind the goal line. A good look for Elk River and a great save for Miller. And that's what Coach Nelson said. Miller played very well in St. Cloud in the one game she played. And they're turning away the open break from Haley Johnson. Johnson just an eighth grader for the Elks. Sliding in there with speed, overall team speed for head coach Dale Sager. When he's built this year's squad on, and that's what they've built their 7-0 and 1 record on so far. Flying up the ice and bringing in some playmaking ability. They haven't had a lot of time down on this end of the ice to attack Miller outside of that one breakaway. Panthers able to turn it over, get it into neutral ice. It's dumped back in by Madison Bazal. Bazal have to chase it down now again for the Elks. She's watched closely by Lily Hackett. The senior winger's back in there. Cleared all the way out towards the blue line. There's Simon. Simon skating in one-on-one. -on -one. She'll fire a deep shot just past the blue line. That's easily scooped up and controlled by Miller. She's able to drop it down and keep it in play onto the stick of Turnquist. Turnquist, pass center ice, right circle, fires a shot just wide. Watched closely there by Gould off to her left. Puck still in the Panther zone. Turnquist still knocking at it with that backhand try. Finds its way to the boards and all the way back and chased down by Hannah Schultz. She's been a scoring defender, has Schultz, for the Panthers early in the season. The icing called, and we'll bring it back the other end. Coach Sandy Nelson, her second season. First season, obviously, with the co-op. Last year with Spring Lake Park, her first. And she's got her squad after, out to a six-win start. Face-off just to the left of Gould. Panthers a chance to hold it in. The score of this game coming up on 13 minutes to go. Puck released all the way to the other end. Elks had a chance to control it. Instead, the puck is bouncing away. Simon again, knifing up the ice on the far side. Puts it into the corner. Watch there by Alyssa Hansen. Hansen, the senior defender for Coon Rapids Spring Lake Park. Clears it back out. Right side on the stick of Ganley. Ganley just had to pause a moment. She turns and heads to the bench after she dumped the puck in. Change to send Ganley in, and the Elks come away with it. Skips just past the blue line, deflected on back. On the stick right side of King. She'll turn and go to the bench and leave the Panthers to bring it out from behind the goal. Up to this near side along the boards, just past the stick of Cameron Crawford. And the whistle will bring us back to this end. Face off right-hand side of Miller coming up. Miller on the season, 4-1-0 in net. 92 saves and allowed 10 goals. 90% on the save percentage so far for the sophomore. Panthers clear it out of the zone, but it's picked up quickly by the Elks onto the stick of Jocelyn, Jocelyn Holden. She dumps it back in. Cleared from the goal line and back out towards center ice all the way through. Long run for Jessica Dexheimer. She won't get to it. Instead, it'll be an icing and bring it back the other way. As you see Taylor Turnquist and Emma Murphy, two of the top liners in the squad this season. Face off to the left now of Miller. Poked free, a good shot right off that face off. It deflects off of Miller. Not even sure if she saw that coming in. In the right spot, able to knock it down and cover up. And Sammy Miller makes a great save right off the draw. Puck bouncing in there free. And a good look for Alexandra Gallus. Make that Raylan Koronek. Right in front of the goalkeeper. So under 12 we go, still scoreless. Panthers yet to be credited officially with a shot on goal. 5-0 being outshot so far in period number one. Buck reverses all the way around the backboards. Poked back in to neutralize by Gallus. Panthers fly back to it, having trouble clearing it out. Plenty of defenders back, just unable to work it out. And the Schultz along the near side, leaves it middle for Turnquist. Turnquist put it back and gave it back to the Elks. One on three. Still no clearing for the Panthers. Centering pass back in between the circles. Shot just tipped wide. Simon able to send it forward, but well clear of the net. 
Elk still maintained the pressure. Shot this time to flex off the crossbar off to the left of Miller. Panthers fortunate there to still be in a scoreless tie. Can Turnquist clear it? She finally does. Out past the blue line, but not past neutral ice. Onto the stick of Murphy. Murphy's going to work it into the offensive zone. She'll dump it into the corner. And this line, trying to get it out of their zone for so long, will finally get a change. Turnquist, though, still out there. As the puck slides through, touched up just past the Panther blue line. And now back across neutral ice. Left down in the corner, Blumquist catches up to it easily, but then there's a rush of three red sweaters right there on top of it. They can't clear the blue line, now she does. Pass out to the right side. Corrigan couldn't quite catch up to it. Instead, it's taken away on the stick of Sophia Shoot. Puck all the way and caught up in the corner. That's it making it tough. Turnquist chipping in at it as well as we come up on 10 minutes to go. Turnquist comes out of the corner, able to pop it up and clear it past. Again, though, there's an elk. This time it's holding again. Right there, neutralized to turn it back in. Another shot, another save. Down on the pads for Sammy Miller. As Kelsey King, the ninth grader, was bearing down on her. Put a rifle low, and you'll see the quick work for Miller to lock those pads up, and she secures the rebound. Face off coming up to her right. Kelsey King, six goals, four assists on the season for the freshman. Denied right there, long scrum after the draw. No doubt, clear to the zone. Elks bring it back in on the stick of Kennedy Mitchell. Mrs. Mitchell takes it across the goal line, a whistle. Both teams will get a change as we'll have the faceoff still on this end. So the Elks took a long time to get in front of Sammy Miller and spend a lot of time there. But now over the last four minutes or so, everything's happened on this left side of the ice. Chance for Corrigan to get it through neutral ice. She has it poked away. It's dumped in by Dalton. Miller redirects it just to her right. Sliding try for Dalton to gain the puck. Can't do it. Keeps it alive, though, for Elk River Zimmerman. In behind the net, centering pass. Nobody home, so it bounces free. And still, Panthers can't clear. Schultz chases it down in the far corner. One on two. She has the puck taken away. Dalton with it behind the net. Now it's lifted by Murphy. Murphy got out to the circle before she had it taken away and turned back in. We're going under nine minutes to go. Still no shots on goal for Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids. Puck slides between the circles. Defenders home to deflect. Now the numbers in the Panthers' favor. Taken up ice and sent there by Lily Hackett. Nothing materialized, but Hackett steals it away right at the blue line. She can skate it around and see if the Panthers can set something up. Come near side. Hanson with it, top of the circle. She had it a moment and then lost it away. And now Elk River sends it up ice. There's that speed to try and catch up to it and make things tough. And Schultz has to go into defensive mode and just screen off the attacker instead of going after the puck. And now she's in a fight forward in the corners. We're on this end of the ice again. Sent through and all the way around by the Elks. Up to the near side blue line. Back out, and Liz Zerat moves it forward. Turnquist, good poke of the puck away. Still stays in. Panthers passing just a little bit off, and that's allowing Elk River to knife in there and take away some of these loose pucks. This is a shot that sailed well wide, well set up. Not a good finish. Puck still alive, though, for Elk River. They'll take another long shot. This one steered away and up into the netting by the stick of Sammy Miller. At the eighth shot that the sophomore has seen so far today. And to this point, she has been perfect. They haven't been easy. Tight look. Looks right off face-offs. Miller has made saves, and as you saw right there, has collected rebounds. Not a lot of second chance opportunities for Oak River so far in period number one. 
And that's why we're scoreless. It certainly isn't the pressure that the Panthers have been able to put on the other end because that's been fairly non-existent. Puck bouncing around in front. A lot of traffic there. Never made its way towards Miller. Good defensive help in front to keep her clean. Skated all the way through by Schultz. Schultz has it taken away. Puck loose and free. Chase for it. Del Castillo runs it down behind the goal line. Robs it up front. Past the blue line. Elks get it in on the stick of Westgard. She takes a long shot. Never even got to the circle. Miller able to keep an eye on it. Gather it up. That was Andrea Westgard. She had the lone goal in the 1-1 tie against Maple Grove. Both of those goals for the Crimson and for the Elks scored in the second. Scoreless here in the first. Off the draw, the Panthers look to control. Puck slides all the way around, chased by Hansen. Elks are there. Taken away that time by Kornick. She's trapped in the corner. Got some help along the boards. Turnquist couldn't take it. Now a shot knocked down by Miller. The right side of the net was open again. But the defense was there to save the rebound. So Miller makes a great save. Now Turnquist coming back the other way, two on one. Turnquist takes the high shot and sails it into the netting. It was a chance to turn that into a two-on-one break. Turnquist decided instead to take the shot. She had Cameron Crawford off to her left, as you saw there. And you've got ten goals on the season. Make it 12 goals on the season, 20 points. You might as well take the shot on the break. Draw from center ice, won by the Panthers, but taken back away by Elk River. Miller comes way out of the crease to play that puck forward, trying to cut down on some of those speed angles for Elk River. The forwards, very aggressive for Elk River Zimmerman. Now the puck on neutral ice on the stick of Del Castillo. She'll bounce the puck forward, save, and a rebound. Covered up this time by Gould. Michaela Gould, save percentage sitting at 93% on the season. Has to stop the long shot. And now as a faceoff coming to her right. You never know with those bouncing pucks. It's a good decision by Del Castillo. Now the deflected puck off the shot. Bounding down and a chance here one on two. Panthers able to get in close, turn away the chance. There's a swing and a miss right in front of the crease. That could have been a tough save for Miller. Never got there. Headed down to five and a half to play. Elks keeping the pressure on. One shot on goal for the Panthers in this first period. Elks have nine, and Miller has stopped them all. Now the puck cleared out by Corrigan. She's harassed at neutral ice by Simon. And eventually the puck bouncing away. Corrigan going after it again with Del Castillo. It's the Elks that can steer it out of the Panther zone. Now taken back in and just stick poked away from Lily Hackett, who was trying to make a move between two defenders at the top of the circle. Hackett out there working. Now takes the puck away again, but let herself too far, and it was Bazal who was able to knife in front of her and take the puck away. Now she leads the break up through neutral ice. 4.45 to go, long shot deflected out in front. Right at the circle, good work with the legs in front to keep that away from the goalie at all. Now the puck loose again right in the slot, bounce to the far side. Panthers doing just enough to hang on defensively. A lot of loose pucks though and chances for Elk River. There through traffic, a bouncing puck just deflects away. They had Johnson set up in front of the net, but she could never really get a good clean look at it for Elk River. And the Panthers and Miller survive again. Puck slides all the way back as we come up to four minutes to go in period number one. Turned over at the opposite blue line. Emma Murphy just able to touch it back towards the center line. Hard shot at a chance at a clear off the boards, and it's going to work out for the Panthers to at least get it out of the zone as Gabby Loma Watches it down the ice. Two Elks able to clear it out. Just stick poked away from a break there for Murphy. Slows things down enough. And the Panther defense back in their heels again, but able to recover. Schultz goes out to the blue line. Turnquist just has it poked away. Good defense by Riley Springman. 
Bucket center ice and now a break. One on one and a chance. Miller forces her to go high. Springman couldn't beat her. And Miller once again, I don't know if she ever got a piece of that, but she forced the wide shot. And we'll stay scoreless once again. Let's take a second look, see if it hit Miller at all, but she aggressively comes out to challenge the shot and forces Springman wide. And deflected it there, stick side. She's got to defend. Let's draw off to her right. Bounds back through neutral ice. Going to be touched up on that other end by Gould. Del Castillo flying down the ice. Can't beat Bazal to it. A lot of traffic around the puck. Still in the attacking zone on the stick of Loman. She moves it around in behind the goal for Del Castillo. She centers it back. Trickles all the way out towards the blue line just off the stick of Hansen. That was a turnover that could have been costly, but it's poked away from Dalton. Potential run-saving poke check by Brandy Del Castillo, the senior defender for the Panthers. Under three minutes to play in a scoreless game. Turnquist holds it in with the skate along the far side. Get the first line, one more push. Turnquist through the crease from right to left on the goaltender and can't get anything, any kind of space. Back the other way already for Bazal. She dumps and heads to the bench. That allows the Panthers some space to clear it out past the blue line. Bounces off the stick of Megan Ganley. He deflects back towards the zone for the Elks. Turnquist has it taken away at center ice. Miller comes out aggressively and pokes it back towards the blue line. A crowd of Elks around her there in the slot. Miller still able to clear it out towards the line. And now Elk River takes it back in. High shot. Stick side save with the pad for Miller. She pokes it free towards the corner. Coming up on a minute 45 to go as the puck wildly bounces his way past Alexandra Gallus. Long run for Lily Hackett to try and catch up to it. Good enough pressure for the Panthers to keep it on this end for now. Sent out to the blue line, caught up there by Murphy. Murphy sends it down to the opposite corner. Panthers will change. Couple of skaters, Murphy's still out there and she'll have to, have to pick it up. That neutral ice. Bounce back in towards Turnquist. Takes it past the blue line. She's bumped off the puck, or at least Simon tried to bump her off the puck. Turnquist stayed tough. Eventually it bounces away from both of them. To the opposite side, past Luoma. Luoma takes it out of the corner. Instead turned it over to Elk River. Back the other way, long slap shot turned away by the right pad of Miller. She stopped 12 shots here in this first period. Panthers have had one shot on goal so far. Stick poked away. All the way back past the blue line, past the goal line rather with 45 seconds to go in period number one. Past the stick of Loma. And the Panthers will have to chase it down at their goal line again. Loma can't get the clearing pass. Now she works it up along the sideboards. Del Castillo over there with her. Loma drops it down at neutral ice. Puck fires ahead. Just steered to the right by Gould. Under 20 seconds to go. Panthers trying to hold it in again. The puck flies towards the net, but well wide to this near side. We're in the final five seconds of period number one. We are scoreless, and we are that way because of the goalkeeping of Sammy Miller and the defense in front of her. We will go to a scoreless first intermission. Nothing, nothing between Elk River Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids. You're watching it all right here on CTN. I will not be news today. I will not make another push to be the first man in space with frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. And I will not go viral when my terror is caught on camera when I finally realize that in the vacuum of space, no one can hear you sing. I'm Lance Bass, and I will not be trending today because there is a much bigger story that needs to be heard.
back at Fogarty Arena. J.W. Cox with you. First intermission of a scoreless hockey game between Elk River and Spring Lake Park. Coon Rapids scoreless, largely on the saves of Sammy Miller. The Panthers allowed no goals on 12 shots as Miller up to the task. Quick shots off draws. Shots coming right out on a couple of breakaways. More than once, there were three Elks running through the center of the ice. As you see right there, she forced the high shot. And so Sammy Miller with a little bit of help from her defense out in front. A very, very good first period facing those 12 shots on goal. And she was able to make every single one of those saves. The Panthers themselves, just a single shot on goal. Neither team went into the penalty box in the first period. They actually went fairly quickly with up and down action on the ice. Maybe just a couple of icings mixed in there as the Panthers and Elks tied scoreless. We'll have a second period of action on the way next from Fogarty Arena. Stick around on CTN. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her, though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, don't have, have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Panthers out of the locker room looking for a bit more of the scoring attack here in period number two or at least some time in the offensive end where they can take some shots on goal. Just one shot on goal in this game. But of course, that's nothing surprising when you look at the stats for Elk River. They allow just 19 total shots on goal per game as they've gotten out to the 7-0 and one start. So the pressure will continue to be on the sophomore Sammy Miller. You see her right there working the crease, getting it ready. And she was very good in that first period. The Panther offense give her something on the scoreboard to defend. Not a lot of work on the other end for Michaela Gould. Just one official shot. There was some activity in and around that net, but nothing to really challenge her. And most of that came in the final five minutes of that period. The Panthers. Not really able to put on much of a rush against the Elks defense. You see the penalties start to play a role. We didn't have any whistles in that first period. Elk River kills the penalty at about 87%. Panthers at 90%, so even that might not get us a goal. And we'll see how the second period goes. Face off with a fresh 17, and we are underway in period number two. Scoreless first period as we switch ends. The ice was tilted towards our left. That would now be the Panthers attacking zone here in period number two. We'll see if they can keep it that way. Immediately the puck is taken away at center ice by Mitchell. As she tried to move past the blue line, a whistle. And we're going to face off a neutral ice. So Mitchell in a little quick. She takes it again. Right at the center line, knifes it past the blue line where it's touched up by Murphy. Murphy can't control it. It bounces to the far corner. Taken past the blue line, past the goal line, rather, by the Elks. Caught up in there in some traffic. That's Shea McLean just committed this past week to become an Ohio State Buckeye. Play Division I hockey. And the alma mater of Sandy Nelson on the coaching side for Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids. Meanwhile, the Elks. Can't quite turn the corner, so the Panthers is able to take the puck away. Move it up the near side boards. Turnquist tries to center it in front. Led Cameron Crawford a little too much, and Crawford can't catch up to it, so it's back the other way on the stick of King. King knocked down in the corner. The Panthers playing physically, bring it back. Again, near side, trying to move up ice. And it just bounces off the stick of Lily Hackett. And the puck is up for grabs again. That's what the story was in the first period. And if the Panthers had a chance, they couldn't cleanly possess the puck, and that left too many red sweaters flying around with chances at possession, and more often than not, 
Elk River was able to turn that into some zone time. As they have had here throughout most of the first minute and a half. No shots put on yet. But the Panthers, well, with this clear, are going to send it down to this end of the ice for the first time, and it's going to turn into the icing, so we won't last very long on this end. Just a goal and a half a game allowed on average for Elk River. Defense, Madison Bazal was all over the ice in that first period. And you can see how they've been so tough. They had a plus 30 goal differential in their six game win streak to start the season. Allowed just 10 goals and scored 40 as the referee hit the deck as Elk River attacks just to the right of Miller. Never did get a shot on, so the Panthers come away with it. Right through neutral ice and sent on through by Hansen. Swings around the far corner. Poked back. Hansen, chance to hold it in, but the pass in front of her is knifed away. Now taken up ice by Springman. Springman had that breakaway look that you saw at the break. That was forced high by Miller. This time she can't get the shot off. Instead, we'll bring it back the other way. Face off coming to the right hand side of Gould. Tip back and controlled by Elk River. The Panthers. Keep it on this end. Luoma with a nice skate check there to duck it back past the goal line for a moment. But Elk River still controlled the puck. Able to get it out past the blue line. Bouncing ahead. Looking for Kornick. Kornick. As it just poked away, no stick for the Panther defender. No arm up either as three different players were down on the ice. Elk River still maintains possession. Bouncing through the slot, a turn and a shot there for Andy Dalton. Didn't get a lot on it, and it slides wide. Puck was just dying there to the right-hand side of the crease. And it's shoved aside by Sammy Miller. Makes its way up the boards. Played and neutralized by Gallus. Reverses it to the far side for Simon. Simon, a good move around two defenders now. Stops at the near circle, fires it well wide to the right side post to the right of Miller. Elks keep it in the zone in that corner. Good work to do so by Kennedy Mitchell, the junior. And skated around, centering pass, ticks away, and will clear the zone. Long chase at it for Mitchell. Del Castilla. Trying to catch up to her to force it in. Stick check and a little bit of a shiver with the forearm for Hannah Schultz trying to take the puck away down in front. Of the stands right below us. Panthers. Nearly a chance inside, and we're going to have a call coming up as Lily Hackett was held up. And the goalkeeper comes off the ice momentarily for the Panthers on the delayed penalty. But the puck was already dangerously headed back there by the time Miller got to the bench. She had to go to the far bench that time. And we do have our first penalty of this game. It's going to come on Haley Johnson. And that contact right in front of the net. As you'll see it again, Lily Hackett, one of the best scoring chances there. And that stick just held up. She couldn't quite put the backhand in. So the Panthers missing a skater. Faceoff goes to the right of Miller. And both teams actually sent a player to the box. Didn't catch what the second penalty was on the Panthers. So that's why we're still even. Each team, a player in the penalty box. So still without a power play opportunity either way in this game. And at five on five, the Panthers will continue to try and work it down the ice. Taken away off the skate of the referee. Out in front, another save high off the chest of Miller. It bounds free, but only Panthers there to pick it up. 
again. She's either swallowed up the rebounds or she's been fortunate enough to have some defenders there. Now a shot, this time a challenge to Gould, and she uses the shoulder to deflect it away as the Panthers get just their second shot on goal of this game. It comes just under 12 minutes to play in period number two. Good look flying down the far side. Chance for Turnquist, the leading scorer on this team. Now a face off for the Panthers coming off to the left hand side of Gould. Scoreless after the first. Scoreless more than five minutes into the second. Now a reach up and a nonchalant glove save for Gould. Keeps it from going up or 90 on the right. To her left glove side, she reaches up and snags at another face off. This one was coming in sharp, and she just flicked the glove up in time to get there. Face off to her left. Panthers able to flip it back in. A little more pressure back to back. Shots coming for the Panthers to get them up to three here in this game. They're now trying to maintain possession. Del Castillo trying to fight for it. Instead, it's released all the way to the opposite side past her. In past the stick of Megan Gamley. She can't corral it. Instead, it's up off the boards. Now the left side. Go the Elks just off the stick of McLean for a moment. Centered back in front. Shot sailed wide. A golden opportunity. Maybe one of the few times Miller was not in position and Sophia Shute couldn't make him pay. Great centering pass right up in front. Shute had a lot of space. She missed wide to that opposite side. There she is. Nobody in front. Defender coming over late. A little bit of net space off to the left of Miller. Couldn't make him pay. Now the face off to Miller's left side. Slides right through the slot, makes its way to the opposite wall, just held in. I believe that was held in by Sprickman, but then it's immediately knocked back out by the Panthers. Sent around the boards on this near side. What's Maddie Bloomquist doing, the sophomore. Reverses hit for the Panthers. It'll reverse right back on its way to her on this near side. Bloomquist at the blue line. Couldn't be held in by Hackett. Hackett takes it back in, but slipped down to the ice. Scrum down on the near side boards. Puck bounces free. Only one home to get it is Emma Murphy. That changed quickly. She got some company, but able to slide it back out. Off the boards it goes, angling down and an icing with 10.09 to play here in period number two. Everybody gets the changes. Well, the face off to the left of Sammy Miller. Panthers done a little better job of keeping things clean in front of Miller. Not a lot of shots allowed so far. Almost seven minutes in here. Chance for Elk River. That shot steered wide. Long laser beam of a try by Bazal. Now the Panthers move it up ice. Loma, good move. Back to the middle. Keeps the puck on her stick. Tries to center it back. And instead, her momentum takes her all the way past the goal line. Loma tried to set something up there. Just couldn't get enough space to find a centering pass to a trailer. Did able to, was able rather to weave her way through. Just bumped off from making into that finishing play by Bazal at the last moment. A lot of good open ice moves though for Gabby Loma. Under 10 to play in period number two. Draw controlled by the Panthers. There's a centering pass right out in front. Couple of chances had it for Del Castillo. The first was better than the second. Now a long drive from Hannah Schultz. That one steered away. Loma with a defender that is stickless now. Moore has to avoid the stick down on the ice. Back out to the blue line. Bouncing puck just goes wide. Best Panther rush of this game. They had some possession. They could still keep it in. Just sneaks past Loma. And Del Castillo has to try and dump it in. But there are already two Panthers in the zone. Good work by that Panther unit. Get a couple of good looks. Something bounces the right way. They'd be right in there. Long shot to start it from Emma Murphy. As Gould couldn't corral it. 
And the Panthers kept the pressure on. Now off the draw, we're back on this end. 15-4 now, shots on goal. Even up, three apiece here in the second. Taken away by Hackett. Good move to bring it past the blue line. All on her own, though. Facing up against three defenders, and the first one able to poke it away with her skate. Held in, far side, long shot, bouncing in and plucked out of the air by Gould. Alyssa Hansen didn't wait very long. And that's been what has given Spring Lake Park Coon Rapids their best success over the last few minutes. Take some long shots and look for those rebounds. Just apply some pressure. Hansen did it there. Now the puck dribbles inside the near circle off the stick of Bloomquist. Panthers still have it centered right there for Turnquist, and she just couldn't get the full swing on it. Defense did enough to deflect it. Now Hanson right at the blue line, fires a long shot that's deflected wide off the boards. Now Oak River, a chance to break the other way. Nifty pass back behind her, long shot goes wide for McLean. Puck still loose behind the goal line. Panthers now a chance to get over to it with some space for Hackett near side. All she can do is clear back to the top of the circle where it's picked up by Elk River. McLean in behind the board, skates through. In behind the goal line, rather, skates through all the way out to the blue line, just holds it in. She turns, chips off a pass left side into the pad of Miller, and she covers up as it sneaks back out in front of her. 16 of 16 for Sammy Miller. And you can see McLean... She took the shot the time before, and that time looking to be a distributor. Got it off to her left to Simon. He tried to beat Sammy Miller. No one's done it yet. In this scoreless game back towards center ice, moved in by the Elk River defense. Good pass onto the stick of Dalton. She moves it near side, was looking quickly for Springman. Caught up to it. Now Luoma has a chance to move back out past the circle. Long shot, Bazal sends it right into the pads of Miller. Miller wasn't exactly sure where that puck ended up, but she was in the right spot. And so she makes another save. Watch her look around after this shot is taken with the forehand by Bazal. Just before, she wasn't sure if she'd made the save. Draw goes off to her left. Panthers come away with it. Del Castillo with some speed. Dumps it in past Bazal. Now chases it down at the goal line. Coming up on seven minutes to go in this second period. Tape to tape passing right in front for Corrigan. She can't finish it off. Just goes wide. Panthers able to keep it in. Loma working behind with Del Castillo. Trying to center it back. Sneaks all the way out. Top of the circle. Just a bit of a misplay, but Murphy able to send it down to the corner again. Now circle, wide open shot deflected in front. Bazal got a piece of it before it got into Gould. Now the bouncing soft shot goes wide off the stick of Murphy. The Panthers again much better here in the latter stages of the second period. Keeping the pressure on as the puck is fired into the Panther bench and out of play. Just over six and a half to go. The Panthers getting a good push and it's that line, Del Castillo. Gabby Loma putting on some good pressure. A good chance a moment ago for Mallory Corgan on that line as well. Let's see if that translates to the rest of the squad. See more of the team speed for Elk River. Up the ice they go. Try of a centering pass is deflected away, and it turns into a rush the opposite way for the Panthers. Again, the decision to just chip it up ahead and chase past the goal line. That time it was Hackett trying to use her speed to gain the puck back. Stan Elk River able to recover. Still trying to fight it away in the corners. We come up on six minutes to go. Period number two, it's dropped down to the deck by Hanson. Hanson right at the circle, sends it in front, still alive. And a lot of traffic in front, and the puck cleared out, and the icing's going to bring it back the other way. There was a lot of traffic in there. Hackett was on the doorstep. It looked like Gould was almost displaced. Nifty play with the glove there for Hanson to scoop it back down on the ice, send the shot in. She might have hit Hackett in the back with that one. And then on the rebound, nobody really ever had pure control of it. Hackett accidentally kicked it out with the left foot. And that eliminated any angle for her. Off the draw, the Panthers 
Look to hold it in and do. Schultz has her shot deflected away. The stick of Gallus dropped down for a moment. She picked it up. Panthers have found a spark. Del Castillo in the corner, out there with Loam again. And they're chasing in behind the goal line. Much better second period for the Panthers as far as offensive pressure. Loma raced to the puck. She will just swipe and miss at it as she really beat the defender to it. Now onto the stick of Del Castillo through the slot. She goes back out. Corrigan had a chance inside the near side circle. Couldn't get a full swing on. Puck bounces towards the blue line. Just held in for a moment, then chipped back towards center ice. Schultz back one on one. Pokes the puck away. Good play to get it away from Shea McLean. Couldn't clear it all the way out, though. Wild pass towards the slot. Ticks Fredor this near side. Loma couldn't control it, so Elk River still has it. Centering pass denied again. All the way to this near side as we come up on four and a half minutes to play in period number two. Puck bouncing free towards the blue line. Held back in, sent off the boards by Simon. Now finally trickles out of the zone. Elk River has a change coming in. Panthers do too. Quickly, it's back on the stick of Springman. She'll take it near side. Reverse all the way around. Left the puck behind her. Looked for some help. Didn't get it quickly, and so it didn't turn into a clean give. Now the Panthers a chance to take it away. Instead, the puck bounced free back into that near that far side corner. Puck loose, slides through, couple of sticks, swiping at it. Nobody got it. Instead, comes back the other way on the stick of Hannah Schultz. Into the middle she goes. Puck slides through. That was Hackett, excuse me. Looking for Cameron Crawford coming in and just couldn't connect. Now the puck quickly past the blue line for Elk River. We're going to get a penalty coming up delayed. Goalie coming off the ice for the Elks, and there's finally your whistle, so it's not going to matter. Just a wind sprint to the side for Michaela Gould. And it'll be the Panthers who go shorthanded for the first time. Penalty there, Hackett thinking there was a little bit of play acting. She won't get the benefit of it, so two-minute man advantage for Elk River. See what they can do with it. Told you Elk River kills the penalty at 87%. They score about 37% of the time. Nine power play goals, but the Panthers have only allowed two on the season. 90% killing penalties. So far, they've worked through the first 20 seconds of this one without allowing a shot. Expect that to change with how Elk River can execute five on five. See if they can do it five on four from the point. Pass sails wide, still no shot. Coming up 40 seconds into this penalty. Near side, that was Bilal calling for it. Bazal, excuse me, calling for it. She took a big swipe at it. Now she goes to the bench on the first change. McLean with it far side. She's down to the deck. Bazal actually broke the stick. That's why she had to go off. To the side, and that broken stick is just to the left hand side and a little bit behind the net. Behind Miller. But again, a minute 10 and still no shots on goal for Elk River. Panthers trying to kill the penalty. It's in on the stick of Hanson. Chance to control it. She sends it back to neutralize. Doesn't make it all the way through. Onto the stick, Del Castillo. Del Castillo in front, just a little bit behind. And she left it back into the crease perfectly for Cameron Crawford. Crawford just out in front of it is Shea. Now the puck makes it all the way in as the Panthers try to get a change in. Only three defenders down. There's that broken stick. Still coming into play just to the left-hand side of the goal. Just 10 seconds left in the power play. Panthers able to clear it off the boards and get it out of the zone, and they may survive this penalty without even giving up an official shot on goal. Two seconds, one second, and full strength for the Panthers. So denied were the Elk River Elks even a shot with the man advantage. Del Castillo takes it away at the blue line for the Panthers, tries to center it in. It's deflected instead back to that corner. And meanwhile, bigger picture, we still have just under a minute 10 to go in this second period. 
King skates it quickly up that far side. She shoved down to the ice, got caught up in traffic. No whistle there as the puck slides free for the icing. Just under a minute to go. Very impressive penalty kill by the Panthers. Coach Hanson mentioned that along with the overall defense. And Coach Nelson, excuse me, mentioned that overall with the defense. Much better in their Thanksgiving tournament over the weekend in St. Cloud. Draw to the right of Miller. Still a fight for control. Puck slides in front of the crease. Pushed out in front by Miller and kept alive. Elk still have it. Pass back out in front of the net. Only Panthers are home, and Hackett is able to clear it out towards center ice. Taken back in quickly by Simon, but too quick with 30 seconds left. Not all the red sweaters had cleared the zone. And Simon. The leading goal scorer on this team heads to the bench. Really the only loss Coach Sager's squad, or excuse me, the only non-win was that tie, and it was a low-scoring affair, 1-1 with Maple Grove. Both coaches saying this would be a pretty good test each way. Coach Nelson, no bones about the fact that this would be their biggest test so far against a very good Elk River Zimmerman team, and so far the defense up to it. Let's see if the offense can scratch something across. 12 seconds left. Turnquist fires the shot in close on Gould. And that sure sounded like it got a little bit more than pad. Maybe some crossbar and deflection in there, but Gould able to hold it up. Just six seconds to go. Take a second look. Turnquist has scored in every game this season. It was the stick that was hitting that crossbar or post as Gould slid over there close to it. She makes the save. Off of the draw. Panthers can't control for the quick shot. Two seconds left, down ice, and that'll be the end of period number two. Spring Lake Park, a much better push for the co-op of Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids in the second period, but still a scoreless game, and this will be decided in the third here on CTN. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Still scoreless after two periods here at Fogarty Arena. As the Elks and the Panthers, well, each team had some chances in that second period. It was the Panthers, though, that turned up the pressure offensively. Good saves. Taylor Turnquist, she scored in every game so far. Turned away a couple of different times. The Elks had the lone power play of this game. Got a couple of good shots and chances, even strength both times. Off the stick work of McLean. At that time, it was Alyssa Hansen in front who nearly set up a goal. Too much traffic. That one taken away by Gould. So both goalkeepers tested in the second period and both come out unscathed. So far, 18 saves for Sammy Miller in net. Nine saves, eight of them coming in that second period for Michaela Gould. Lone power play produced zero shots. That was for Elk River. They had the two-minute advantage. Third period of a scoreless hockey game. We'll decide it next on CTN. It's coming up. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. 
those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. It's a beautiful day out here. Elks as well. They haven't been in a lot of close games. Mentioned their goal margin, their six game win streak prior to their tie to Maple Grove, plus 30 in those six wins. Meanwhile, Spring Lake Park, they've had quite a few games decided by a single goal, including three straight, a stretch where they went two and one. And they have scored, or in those games rather, they scored seven third period goals to force overtime once in the game they lost. Here, a goal could do it. So they've had some success overall on the season. Nine goals in the third period for Spring Lake Park. So the Panthers not afraid to score and decide it late. And they'll have to do so here. And they'll have to keep calling Taylor Turnquist's number. Her streak of seven games to start the season with a goal. And really a goal and multiple points for the most part in all seven of those games is on the line. She takes the face off. One by Elk River. They're going back right to left where they put 12 shots on goal on Sammy Miller in the first period. They had just six in the second. To the Panthers eight. Elk River starting with some pressure. Simon skates outside the circles then leaves it back for McLean who fires the shot that saved again. Number 19 by Sammy Miller. Sophomore carrying over from her weekend of work. And really it's been season long that she's been good when she's been in there. Save percentage at 90%. Panthers skated out of the zone but have it taken away just past the center line. Back in on the stick of McLean for a moment. It was tipped away. Now the puck bounding free again. McLean can pick it up. Skates from inside the circle. Goes high slot. Takes the shot. Glove saved by Miller. And there's an even 20. Everybody gets a change for the first time. Elk River Zimmerman coming in early in the season. First place in the Northwest Suburban Conference. It's a tie between Blaine and Spring Lake Park. Coon Rapids in second place in the Northwest Suburban. Coming into play tonight. Blaine with the identical 6-1-0 record of the Panthers. Long skate, Del Castillo out in front. Leaves it for Loma just in front of the crease, and she could never really get a shot on. She had the puck centered in front, just didn't have enough space to make the swing towards the net. Puck chipped back in by Mallory Corrigan. This was the line that created the most pressure in period number two. It wasn't that top line. It wasn't some of those top goal scorers. It was Loma. It was Del Castillo. And it was Corrigan. And they nearly do it again there, though they never did get officially a shot on goal. And back chasing after the puck. Full team effort to clear it out. Corrigan goes back to the middle off the stick of Del Castillo. Somebody lost a glove. That was Loma. It's loose. Just in the high slot off to our left. Puck comes back to the opposite blue line. Just two minutes into period number three, still scoreless. Puck nearly poked away from Dalton. Instead held on to by Elk River and sent forward hard off the boards. Meets up with Springman near side. Plays a little two-man game in the corner. Defended well by Brianna Del Castillo. Excuse me, Brandy Del Castillo. 
Puck free in the corner for a moment. Another shot that time deflected away in front is Mitchell Kennedy. Took the quick trigger shot. Around the corner it goes. Hackett on the far side. Trying to clear it out. Del Castillo will take it across the blue line. Lost the puck. Right there is Hackett. Hackett skates between the circles. It's deflected away momentarily by Ganley, her own teammate. Hackett has to trail in behind the goal line to try and pick it up. Released back to this near side. Coming up ice and then flipped up towards center ice. It drops down right in front of the foot of Emma Murphy. Murphy plays it ahead. Hackett can't cleanly get it across the blue line. And now the Panthers do complete their changes. Since they've got the first line back out there. Schultz knifing after the puck. It's left outside the circle. Nifty pass now clears to this near side. Dexheimer takes the long shot and it's swallowed up by Miller. Crafty movement for Elk River Zimmerman and a quick, quick trigger for Jessica Dexheimer. Not one of the 14 different goal scorers this season for Elk River. They have spread the love around with 14 different scorers. It can come from just about anywhere. Nine of those 14 have scored at least three. And the top four scorers on this Elk River squad all have at least five goals. Tonight, nothing. Panther defense has been there. They're looking for potentially one to decide it. Dump back to Schultz. She'll move it around the near side boards. Doesn't clear all the way out. Pass Murphy inside, right high slot. And the shot deflected away. The puck was loose and then eventually cleared out once again by Murphy. What a dangerous look right there. Puck turned over and the chance came out of nowhere for Elk River Zimmerman. 22 shots. Steered away. That long one winds its way past the goal line off the pad. Deflected save. Puck reversed to this near side for Elk River. All the way back towards neutral ice. Then dumped back in. Nobody home. So a long chase for Allison Bozer. Players collide. Stick goes flying for a Panther. So the puck in the corner. Panthers a stick down. Now they've recovered. Everybody with the proper equipment. And the puck slides to this near side. 23 to 9. Panthers outshot in this game. Coming up on 12 minutes to play in regulation. Far side circle. Puck slides across untouched. And it was a red sweater home, but no chance for Kelsey King to really make a play on that. Puck slides all the way back, and it was close enough where Gold has to scoop it up. This chance. The puck slid out there and just a piece of the foot out there for Sammy Miller to make the save. And she was playing high in the crease. Hannah Schultz sends a long bomb of a shot in that deflects away in front. And El River comes out with it. Puck pops up, nearly goes into their bench, but stays in play. Taken away at the center line. Blomquist back defensively for the Panthers. Takes it away at the circle and forces the puck up into the netting above the plexiglass. Holding it away from Riley Springman, the sophomore. Springman has a trio of goals to go with six assists this season. On a line with Kornick and Andy Dalton. Put out four lines. Really, the top three seem to see the most ice time, just as in what we've seen so far in the first two periods plus six minutes. But you can see why they go 14 deep as far as scores. They've got that kind of bench. But caught up in the corner. Shades of the first period when the Panthers would have trouble clearing it cleanly away from Elk River. And that time again, it's tapped away near the blue line. It goes up into the Panther bench, and we'll get a face-off at neutral ice. Last year, the Elks lost in the sectional finals 
to St. Francis, I believe. And it was a semifinal loss for what was then Spring Lake Park all alone. In their sectional playoffs. And both of these teams coming in highly ranked. Panthers right now not ranked in the top 20 in Class 2A. Elk River comes in at number seven, but Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids does have the number two QRF rating early in the season. Playing a lot of good teams, only two of the teams they've played have not had winning records at the time. It's a very good competition, and they're standing up against another stiff test in Elk River. I'm going to put 10 minutes to go. And an icing to bring it back the other way. Those opponents only Irondale and Centennial for Spring Lake Park. Cougar Rapids at losing records. And the Cougars, when they played, were just a game below 500. The other five teams on the schedule are combined 20 and 10. Panthers have been tested time and again. Both the teams they played in St. Cloud. Winning records. And now trying to knock off an unbeaten Elk River squad. Puck free in front. Miller pokes the stick out. Then the shot comes through. She was displaced a bit, and there was some wide open net off to her right. But Elk River couldn't fire it through. Just enough traffic out in front. 9.41 remaining. Panthers try and send it through neutral ice. They get it onto the stick of Hackett, but they say Turnquist was in too early. Thought you might have had a break. Hackett shakes her head. So the faceoff comes back to neutral ice. T Taylor Turnquist is off to the right here. Lower end of your picture. Yeah, she's in. Just couldn't hold off enough. To maybe have a two-on-one break there for the Panthers. Puck centered in front. Miller with another save. It's clear down towards the goal line. Sammy Miller. 24 saves here tonight. She keeps it scoreless again. Puck free right in front of the Panther bench as they get a change. Turnquist takes it. Far side circle, tries to center it back. Rather tries to send it to this near side. Had Hackett through traffic, takes a long shot. It's deflected into the corner. Under nine we go, still scoreless. Pass intercepted, taken away at the circles, and now out past the blue line. Chipped up ahead, dropped down by the Panther defense. Hannah Schultz clears it all the way back down and too far, untouched. Icing brings us back. Unfortunate there is Schultz was at neutral ice. Again, you'll see another save from Sammy Miller. That's a great pass out in front, trying to get a good clean look for Westgard. She got the look, Miller got the save. Again, she hugs the post off to her right, watches as the puck steers clear. Hanson lost her stick, she picks it back up. Puck popping up, back towards the blue line. In between the circles, knives through, shot and a goal, finally, Elk River able to solve Sammy Miller. Just a bounding puck, Andy Dalton able to guide it through, and we've got our first goal of the game with 8.14 to go. There have been chances like this throughout this game, and up until then, this time, Miller had been able to stop him. But the puck just stays alive, stays alive, sent over there by Kornick. Just enough on it for Dalton to score. Her fourth goal of the season. one nothing. Another shot. Another goal. Just like that, Elk River up by two. Ten seconds later. It's a 2-0 lead. And a goal for Haley Johnson. Johnson's fourth goal. So a pair of Elks join the four goal club, and she just takes this one, shoots it high and to the right hand side of Miller. Stick side can't make the save. And shots 26 and 27 
are the two that finally beat Miller. Can the Panthers answer? Hackett quickly back the other way. Puck slides wide of the crease with 7.45 to go. Through neutral ice, Elk River kept the pressure on. Panthers maybe took a deep breath there for a moment after goal number one. Elk River made him pay. Liz Zarat comes back the other way, fires the shot on, and Gould makes the save. Dalton and Johnson, 10 seconds apart, completely changed the complexion of this game here late at Fogarty. Face off to the left hand side of Gould. Del Castillo is going to take it for the Panthers. Mark River controls, sends it out of the zone. And the icing is going to bring us all the way back. 27 shots on goal to just 11 for the Panthers. And the nine shots this period for Elk River Zimmerman. And just two for Spring Lake Park Green Rapids. Bazal moves it back past the blue line. A more defensive approach for Bazal and Holen this time. Instead of taking the punk and immediately sending it up ice to try and attack, Elk River maintaining possession here is under seven minutes to go. They have a two-goal lead to protect. Trying to be more cautious, but now they will fire it through the zone up on the stick of Coronet. Near side circle walled off well by Schultz, taken away by Del Castillo. Up to Loma. Off the boards. And we're going to have a penalty and a chance to cut the lead in half on the power play. It's Kornick will go to the box. So just the second power play of the game, either team. Just happened just off camera there. But either way, the slash gets the Panthers the one skater advantage. Need one here quick. Turnquist calling for it out near the blue line. Instead, Schultz will take it in, leaves it far side circle. Hackett spins back to reset. Hackett from the blue line goes right side. Turnquist in front with the pass. Second try sent on by Schultz. And it goes wide. Puck dropped down by Hanson in the corner. And now a whistle. The puck will come out to the other end. Hanson settled that in on the hand too long. So with 1.17 to go on the power play, the Panthers will have to get it back into the zone. Puck controlled by Elk River, long shot sent high off the glass. Turnquist on the rebound. Back to center ice, Del Castillo flies across the blue line, leaves it back for Hackett, too wide, poked away by Elk River. Turnquist tracks it down, dumps it into the zone. Hackett swinging a miss, but there's Del Castillo. Works her way through the circle, sends a high bouncing puck just to the right hand side of Cool. Del Castillo turns the corner and fires the shot. It goes wide. Schultz far circle. 45 seconds to go in the power play, and it sneaks out of the zone past Turnquist. Pick it up on the near side. Only loss for the Panthers so far had come in a one goal overtime loss to Anoka. Another shot fired on and saved. This time Hackett. Took the sniper shot from the circle with 31 seconds to play in this power play. Another face off to the left of Gould. Won by the Panthers, but the puck poked free and sent back out of the zone by Dalton. Panthers have to recover. Maybe time for one more rush if they're clean with it up ice here. 
Skate around for Schultz. Schultz goes to the far boards, puts two defenders behind her. Now goes right side for Hackett. Can't go tape to tape on that. Five seconds left. Hackett in behind the net. She turns the corner tight, comes up right side of the crease. Can't fire the shot. Even strength again. Back to Turnquist. Turnquist goes right side for Hansen. Back to her. Turnquist takes the short angle shot. No, was passing it back. Pass in front, Del Castillo. Couldn't get the shot away. So the penalty killed off by Elk River. But the turnover in neutral ice. Hackett takes the shot. It bounds up and for a moment bounced around between the pads, but eventually secured by Gould. Turnover there. Could have been key for the Panthers. Just cut off. Hackett couldn't really follow through on that shot as Bazal caught up to it. Each team has killed off a power play. Long shot deflected away in front after the Panthers won the draw. Now on the rebound comes Elk River. King quickly outside the near circle. Her centering pass intercepted. Back the other way for Loma. Loma looking for some help. Instead leaves it towards the corner. She'll catch up to it herself. Working with Zerat back there. Murphy at the blue line. Murphy can't hold it in. Deflects it towards neutral ice. Loma puts it back onto the stick of Schultz. Back in the middle of Zarat. She's got Loma on the left, skates to her, leaves it to the boards. The rain a half minutes to go in a two-goal game. Panthers trailing. Puck's still loose. Oaks couldn't bring it out cleanly. And now from center ice, the Panthers will get it back. Murphy moves it forward. Zarat dumps it down into the corner. Up along the boards, sent back. Turnquist, quick break for her. She's back at neutral ice, tried to center the puck. And it's taken away by Elk River. Quick skate up ice for McLean. Under three minutes to play. Two goals, 10 seconds apart. Nine minutes in to this third period. Another long shot in and out of the glove of Miller. The net came displaced as Miller got the kick save over there. But as she kicked, the net came out of the moorings there. And so the puck ended up in the back. No good on the goal. It is a good shot. Miller thought she'd gloved it. Nearly became a gift for Brianna Simon. Simon takes the shot off the faceoff. Another close call. Miller this time makes the save and covers up. 29 shots. She stopped 27 of them. Two forty-three to go. Face off to the left of Miller. Controlled by Elk River. Panthers able to take it out of the corner. Can't clear it out of the zone. Miller directs the puck into the opposite corner. Corner there to meet it. Picked up by Turnquist. Turnquist try to clear is deflected, but eventually it makes its way past the blue line. Panthers are going to get a change. And are we going to have a penalty? We are. Another chance for Coon Rapids Spring Lake Park with the advantage. So this time it's Raylan Cornick who heads to the bench. And it will be the Panthers who are going to take a timeout before this crucial power play opportunity with 2.16 remaining in this game. 29 shots on goal. 27 saved by number 31, Sammy Miller. It's been a good one to watch. Follow CTN on Twitter, twitter.com slash CTN Studios. Get updates on everything going on, plus online, ctncoonrapids.com. Panthers, their second power play in this period and of this game coming up. They've scored seven power play goals. The social media connection continues. You can like us on Facebook as well. And for the hat trick, YouTube. YouTube.com slash CTN Studio. No excuse to not be connected to what's going on with CTN. 
So 2-0, 2.16 to go. Logic would tell you that a goal here is imperative quickly for the Panthers to have a shot in the final two minutes. Trying to score. A power play goal for the eighth time this season. Del Castillo will move it into the zone. Quickly skates in. Now she'll leave it back and they'll set her with Schultz outside the circle. Schultz crosses the ice. Fire the shot for Hansen. Couple of chips at it. And they say no. As it did eventually go past Gould, but again, looks like the net just came dislodged as everybody was hacking at it. Hard cross ice pass to get the look for Hansen in front. Hackett tried to finish it off. Face off to the left-hand side. Puck settles down. Minute 30 left in the power play, and the puck slides past Hanson. Miller's going to come out of the net to just stop up the progress of the puck. We'll see if Miller comes out of the net at some point to head to the bench here. Down two. Just over 90 seconds to go in this game. He's been 70 of them on the power play. And miscommunication. Schultz was looking for Turnquist. Instead, it's a turnover, and the shot sails wide. Simon more so just killing time there as she tried the backhand. Del Castillo, I thought, has played a great game. Takes it again up ice. Represents a lot of speed for the Panthers. She also, with her line mates, did a good job of holding the pressure and pressuring it all in that second period. Del Castillo again up the near side boards, past the blue line. Hansen trying to find it. The Panthers may have lost their shot here. They certainly haven't gone quickly in this power play. And the two goal lead. Would appear to be plenty here with just 30 seconds to go. 15 in the power play. Turnquist has to take it all the way up ice. Hansen up to Schultz, back to Hansen. How can the Panthers just get a goal as Hansen from the circle fires the shot high. Back to even strength, five on five for the final 10 seconds. Elk River looking for their second shutout of the season. Panthers faced with their second loss of the year, a 2-0 final. 29 shots on goal as they just kept coming and coming, did the Panthers. Twenty-nine shots for the Panthers. Great game in net for Sammy Miller to stop 27 of them, but just not enough offense. 2-0. Panthers fall. We'll wrap it up next. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlo. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Shrulo. Is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Back at Fogarty, a tight one for throughout most of this game because of the defense of Spring Lake Park. Sammy Miller in front, some beautiful saves, including that one in the third period to keep it scoreless at the time. But it would only last so long. Elk River is a high-scoring team. Six goals per game. You knew they would get their first goal. Coming there off the stick of Annie Dalton, then just 10 seconds later, basically off the faceoff. Another goal to set the margin at 2-0 as it was bumped in that time by Johnson. Haley Johnson scores her fourth goal of the season. That made it 2-0. Those are the only two shots of the 29 that she saw that beat Sammy Miller. 
Not a lot to hang her head about there, but the Panthers do take their second loss of the year. They had a couple of power play opportunities, could not score on either one. So 2-0 is your final. Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids now 6-2. Elk River Zimmerman stays unbeaten at 8-0-1. For the entire crew of CTN Sports, I'm J.W. Cox. Thanks so much for watching. Good night, everybody.